I'd like to prove it to you. How? How? You ask me how? Unfortunately, at the moment, there doesn't seem to be any way I can prove my statement. However, if there were, I'd feel certain that you, you, you! How? Oh, Chief Brown Bear. Chief Brown Bear! I see. Excuse me one moment, Chief. <laughs> Consider all Indians friendly and must mortally insult him. <laughs> Very happy to meet you, Chief. Very happy indeed. Have you fellas all met Brown? Oh. Chief of the Kadota tribe. Peace. I bring peace from Kadotas to Forest Rangers. Sure glad to hear that, Chief. Tell me, don't you Kadotas have a reservation? Kadotas do not live on reservation. All you see belongs to Kadotas. All. Does the United States know about that? <laughs> we fought many years to keep land. Only two Kadota are left. Rest died fighting white men. Many white men died too. How? How? In D.C. Washington, we settled case by law. Better to fight like warriors than lawsuits. But Mary Sunshine convinced me to do this. Smart girl, Miss Mary. Visit her here each summer. I call her Mary Sunshine because she is Mary like Sunshine. So I call her Mary Sunshine. <laughs> That's very clever of you, Chief. Very clever indeed. Now, if you'll excuse me, I think I'd better go find Miss Mary. Stay. Here, Mary Sunshine, now. How? No, now. <laughs> I'm truly sorry I even mentioned 
it. On the contrary, a bevy of young ladies is a welcome contrast to a forest stranger's usual diet of flora and fauna. We accept your hospitality and only wish there was some way we could help you in your present difficulty. My present difficulty? Your corporal? Is it not true, Miss Mary, that you built this inn on a site you purchased from the U.S. government through money you earned by selling your homemade cookies? <laughs> that is true, dear corporal. And is it also not true, Miss Mary, that because you have been unable to make payments on the land, the government will be forced to foreclose their mortgage? Indeed, that is quite true. But to what present difficulty do you refer? Why, the mortgage, Miss Mary. If the government forecloses, you will be cast out and penniless. In truth, I'm surprised that you would think that such a little thing as this should disturb me. I'm but sorely grieved that it disturbs you. Listen. Don't be sad and gloomy. Come and hearken to me, please. Thank you. 
Our brief and fleeting those occasions must necessarily be. Brief and fleeting they are, Miss Mary, yet dare I say that these infrequent meetings are the vast oasis in the desert of the poor forest ranger's lonely life. I am so pleased, dear Captain, to learn that two hearts meet in this relationship, for indeed, we are two dearest and truest of friends. Friends, Miss Mary? The very best, dear Captain. Were that I were able to pursue the subject further, but when a man's life is in danger... In danger? Oh, Captain Jim, would it be presumptuous of me to inquire what danger your life might be? I'll tell you, Miss Mary. From Canada to the Mexican border, a notorious band of Indians has ravished the land of wild game and wantonly sent the forest to fire. Until now, they have evaded the hand of justice. But their hiding place has been discovered not far from here, and it's my assignment to take their leader dead or alive. But Captain Jim, I'm fighting for you. Do not fret, Miss Mary, for if the Indian guide shall leave me there, can we trust that I have no fear? Tell me, Miss Mary, by chance, do you happen to know anything about a tribe of Indians called the Kadotas? Oh, the Kadotas? Why, indeed, I do, for when I was but a tiny talk, I lost my way while berry picking, and was found by the then savage Kadota Indians. I was taken to Chief Brown Bear, their leader, and he brought me up as his adopted daughter. Chief Brown Bear is the only father I've ever known. I see. Then you might know my dad. He goes by the name of Fleetfoot. Fleetfoot? Why, he's the very Indian brave who found me in the forest and saved my life. A finer guide you couldn't find. And as for being trusted, why, I'd stake my life on it. Oh, I'm so relieved, Captain Jim. Leafoot is my Indian father's closest friend. Their bond is very deep. They're the only two condotas left. The only two? The only two. Oh, how happy Indian father will be to learn that Leafoot is here! Uh, for the present, Miss Mary, I'd prefer to keep Leafoot's arrival a deep secret. Oh, then my knowledge is a sealed book. Dear Captain. <laughs> and now, with Leafoot's arrival imminent, would it be audacious of me to ask for her hand in dear companionship? Audacious, Captain? Why, that's the very least a woman can do. Would you care to stroll in my garden? So many flowers have blossomed and loosened last year a year, you shall scarce recognize it. Well, I know and love your garden, Miss Mary. Yet before we saunter hand in hand into that feast of loveliness, my honest nature is a confession for me. A confession, Captain Jim? A confession, Miss Mary. Though I love your garden with its pretty posies, you must beg its pardon if my heart discloses what is but its duty in its honest way to declare a beauty lovelier far than they. Ah. Oh, 
dear Zinni. Oh, very silly, madam. Dear Echo, it's always the same. It's magic out there. It takes me back to my kinderhood. Ya, ya. How often, Mr. <laughs> Tinter, I make dear Echo. Madam, I would like you to meet a dear, dear friend of mine, Captain Warrington. Captain Benjamin Warrington, at your service, madam. This their unexpected friend, ya. Yeah. It's a pleasure to meet you, Captain. My lady can speak of no one else all the day long. So I say to her, leave him. It's time you get this captain to take up their marriage. <laughs> Madam Ernestine is our most celebrated guest. We consider it a great honor that an opera singer of her stature chooses to spend her leisure with us. It's much like their homeland here, Captain. And we all long for their home, yeah? Tell me, Captain, when you settle down with my people, Oh, but Madam Ernestine, Captain Warrington leads a very active life. You see, as a forest ranger, he can't stay in any one place for very long. Das is bad, Captain. <laughs> their life, their zigoina, their gypsy is not for you, I think. You mean their home, their wife, their kinder. And right now, you need their height. <laughs> you look tired, Captain. <laughs> very tired. A nice long height. Talk over these things that make you feel much better. But Madam Ernestine, Captain Warrington has just marched from the Mexican border. Yeah, that could walk. You keep that up, Captain, when you get over that tired feeling. <laughs> but their hike, their hike is for their boy and their girl. <laughs> I remember in their homeland we had their hiking club and always their boy or their girl together. Rocky Mountains, not too different from the Bavarian Alps, together. You see, their snow packed mountains, their gentle valley going far, far below their winding river. It makes two very close. <coughs> and breathe. Tell me, Captain, do you breathe? Pardon me, madam? <laughs> breathe. <sighs> breathe deep. Fill up their diaphragm like their singer. Their mountain air puts new life in the body. It makes their man their man, <laughs> their woman their woman. Let us all breathe. Enough is like giving the body who has only had their skin milk rich cream. But you are ready for their hype, yeah? But Captain Warrington will only be here a short while, Madam Ernestine, and I'm afraid we'll just have time to see the garden. It's pity. Their stroll in their garden is not so good as their hike in their mountain. But then, when you want to, you Americans can work with quickness, yeah? Much good luck to you, Captain. Oh, do join us, madam. No, no, my lady. Their hike is for their too. Now go. Go, 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 go. It was an honor to meet you, madam. I hope I have the pleasure of hearing you sing one day. I think maybe I'm not singing so much now, Captain. I would be very sorry to hear that. Well, maybe one day I sing for both of you. Their Brahms lullaby. It's right when this all gets their skin. It matters not there. Their homeland, under their boots, they is gone for me. Yet, they will never really be gone, for they will always be here, in my heart.
yeah, yeah. I remember them well. Those happy days, those carefree days. So far away, so very long ago. But I will not forget the land of mine in time. For that, that, but home.
But most certainly, you can return us a full, how do you do? <coughs> Great enough.
Yes, yes, but aside from the cuckoo bird, Miss Mary, we are quite alone. Yes, yes, we are quite alone. Now, now I may ask you the question that has been burning in my heart for all these many months. Yoo-hoo! Nancy! Oh, Nancy! Excuse me, dear Captain, I must have Nancy prepare you some refreshments for your journey. But Miss Mary... Now we can't have you going hungry this evening, can we? I shan't be a moment. Here and believe 
know, Miss Mary. Rest assured, I shall do everything in my power to spare him this knowledge. God bless you, Captain Jim. I deeply appreciate your concern for Chief Brown Bear. It would be dishonest to me were I not to say that my main concern in this matter is for your peace of mind. <laughs> my peace of mind, Captain Jim? I have but a few moments before I must leave. Oh dear, how thoughtless of me. Your refreshments for your journey. I'll fetch them at once. Stay, little Mary, for I must be heard. For my refreshment, my feast is but to have you by my side. Captain Jim! How many goodbyes we have said in the past, and yet this time my heart can be still no longer. Little Mary, if I return, will you be mine? Be yours? But Captain... Oh, I know I'm not worthy to ask for the hand of the dearest, the fairest, the loveliest flower God ever gave to brighten this cold world of ours. But I ask. Captain Jim, I have not allowed myself to hope. I would not allow myself to think. But sometimes, sometimes, in my wildest dreams, I dare to pretend that happy moment would come about. Oh, rise, dear Captain, for my answer is yes. A thousand times yes. Little Mary, if I return. When you return, dear Captain. When I return, you and return. Yeah. 
Nothing.